Uh, our hoop show said, don't talk about the Raiders. Trust me, we will not. Nice to see Beatles and Shams in the house, in the building here uh, at FanDuel. Okay, we got to talk about the Bills. Are we worried? LaShawn McCoy joining us. Still want to talk about the Eagles and Jalen Hurts. We've got to talk about Jeff Saturday and the Colts pulling out a win over, <laughs> oops, oops, the Raiders. And then the Packers are trying to win me back. Oh, Packers calling me late night, saying we'll run the ball. We'll get to that. But let's talk a little Sunday night football. What a fun reward. Sometimes I watch football all day on Sunday, and I'm like, man, I just spent the entire day morning tonight watching football. And that was, this, of course, what happened last night with Tampa Bay playing in the morning, uh, of course, uh, across the ocean over in Munich. I'm like, which ocean? I don't know. Um, I do. It's the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, that's the one. Ooh, welcome to the show. Uh, Kay Adams here. You guys can tweet at the Up and Adams show. Uh, but it was a very rewarding day of football. It wasn't like I spent an entire day. I should have done some chores or something. Like I was glued to my seat. We had two overtime games. It was amazing. And uh, even watching last night was a fun game because there's so many ins and outs uh, in the NFC and AFC. So Sunday night football. It wasn't uh, the offensive explosion that we expected. With Justin Herbert going up against this new look Niners offense, but it was still entertaining. The Niners rally 22-16. They win over the Chargers. And here is Jimmy G, the winner after the game. We got a team, man, and uh, I think it showed last week against the Rams, guys stepping up in different roles, and uh, it just showed again today, just guys don't care if they get 10 targets or one target. If we get a W, a W's a W, and that's all we're here for. Okay, but I care, Jimmy. I care. I was so excited on Friday. We left the show. I'm drinking beer. I'm drunk on the set saying, I can't wait to see what this looks like with CMC and Debo. They're going to touch the ball 50 times a piece. There's going to be creative uh, play calling, maniacal genius Kyle Shanahan. He's been cooking it all up, of course. Uh, but in all seriousness, Jimmy is right, and he's the perfect quarterback for the situation. He simply does not care. He does not care who likes him, who doesn't. The team loves him, and, and it clearly that permeates from Shanahan and him to the rest of the squad to not really care about who's getting the ball, how much. We saw McCaffrey on the sidelines a bunch. The offense is a work in progress. They're trying to figure out how to fit all those incredible pieces together, and they still were able to do enough to pick up a big win against a quality opponent. And after a few early hiccups, the Niners, number one defense, the number one defense was amazing down the stretch. They completely shut out the Chargers in the second half. And San Francisco, if you look at things, and we like to at this point, we're in the double-digit weeks now, people. They're just a half game back of Seattle for the NFC West lead with a chance to wrestle first place away next Monday night if they can beat the Cardinals in Mexico City. So there's that for little Sunday night action. LaShawn McCoy is going to be on our show. Uh, he is a daily show as well. He did uh, speak on FS1 and they crush it on that show. So I can't wait to dig into some of those takes. Uh, my old friend, we did a lot of time together on Good Morning Football. So happy to have LaShawn on in a bit. But uh, some big takeaways from the weekend before we get to that. And this is, by the way, so everyone's clear, this is a Philadelphia Eagles schedule that I happen to have printed out, and I want LaShawn McCoy to tell me where the loss is going to be for this team versus saying zero, which is not a surprise to anyone, but we'll see. Uh, okay, we got to get to the, the Vikings-Bills game was the best game of the year, and Justin Jefferson gave us one of the best catches, one of the greatest catches in NFL history. And this, I'm just, shh, I can't talk. Yeah, you can't talk during one of those. You can't talk during a highlight like that. Oh, my word, how does he wrestle it away from all those defenders? Unbelievable. And it is symbolic of the way the Vikings miraculously snatched this 33 to 30 overtime win right out of Buffalo's hands. Now I asked last week if Minnesota could sustain what has been a bizarro way of winning in which they come out really hot, then they completely fizzle and disappear for kind of a long stretch and then they turn it up and turn it on in the fourth quarter. Can they keep doing that and win? Well, I got an emphatic answer to that question yesterday afternoon. The Vikings er erased a 27 to 10 deficit uh, in the second half in snowy Buffalo, in Buffalo to win one of the most thrilling regular season games I think I've ever seen. So there is something magical happening, and it's not the chains, and it's not the whatever, but it's all of it in Minnesota. Uh, and Cousins was brilliant down the stretch. He engineered his league-leading fifth, fourth quarter comeback win of the season. Jefferson, of course, as you just saw, on another planet that will live on 
I could watch that. I think we'll have to show it like 19 other times on the show. And then the defense did their thing too. They're coming up with critical stops. Patrick Peterson's walk-off interception. Oh my goodness. And this is, you know, I don't know why Josh Allen keeps doing this. What is the story? But uh, it's no longer fair, everyone. And this was your notice. It is no longer fair to question the legitimacy of this team. Eight and one. Uh, do they make their fans uncomfortable week after week? Sure, but they've clearly gotten rid of whatever's been going wrong when it comes to winning and losing these close games like they did and haunted them all last year. At some point, you just have to enjoy the ride and you gotta enjoy it with, you know, the, uh, the chains and all, like this guy. Oh, I don't think we have it. Oh, there we go. What a team win. Thank you so much for the incredible welcome. That was one of the great games we've ever played in. It was great to win, played against a good team, five and five. Everyone made plays. That's the formula. Let's keep it going. Five and five, bye week. Jones trying to score. singing country roads i love that that's amazing that's over, over in munich and i liked hearing tom after the game talk about how it invigorated him they added some i mean there's some unkind tmz reports this morning have you seen those yet and it's not good but uh but he was talking about how it sort of uh, breaks up the everyday the it's an interesting take and i want to say that because you heard things like from lafleur about going to london and the pods aren't good and we don't want to travel and you're going anyway. So, you, so to take that and say, this doesn't suck that we're going to Germany. The mindset a winner has is that of Tom Brady's. We're going to go and we're going to make the best of it. It's good for bonding. It's good to spend time with the guys and it breaks up the every day. And that's something that I rarely hear NFL players say and he is embracing it. And that's why I think what I was saying all last week is correct. And this turnaround is happening, baby. 21 to 16. Seahawks are do dominant as all get out uh, and couldn't get it done. And I feel more comfortable than ever in saying that these Buccaneers are back. And I'm going to ask LaShawn McCoy about it, of course. But they may not look 100% quite like themselves, but they do have something going on right now. They're creating some separation in the NFC South and the rest of the conference is going to be kicking themselves, I really believe so, for letting Tampa hang around and figure it out. It's, we're, it's happening in front of our very eyes. Talk to Levante David about it last week. Uh, and, and, and make no mistake, they're figuring it out. Brady looked as sharp as he has all year. He threw multiple touchdown passes for just the second time all season. Bang, bang. Evans, Julio, Godwin, they all had their big moments here. And this once impenetrable run defense has resurfaced. They held rookie Phenom. This is the guy who I said should be rookie of the year. Kenneth Walker had 17 yards on 17 carries. That is impressive. And most importantly, the balance is back in the ha lay yeah, run the ball. Brady's figuring it out like I was scratching my head about it. Week one, and for the first time since then, the Bucks ran it more than they threw. This is how you win the football game. You can see how it opened up the offense. White, Fournette, they combined for 162 yards and a score on 36 carries. So if this is the kind of Tampa I'm going to see the rest of the way, NFC South, you're out. Sorry, it belongs to them. And NFC as a whole, you are on notice. And that's with some of the impressive play we saw from that conference yesterday. So um, should we stay in the NFC? Let's do this. Okay, here's the deal. Let's just show you what happened last night. So last week, I said I'm not talking about the Packers anymore because... Why would I? They don't listen to me. I say run the ball, commit to running the ball. They're throwing it all over the field. Uh, and then look at around, what was this, like 8 p.m. Eastern last night? Look at the text. Look at what happened. The Packers text me, and they say, sup. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I didn't delete their number, obviously. I still had it saved, but I was just being kind of like, new phone, who this? Like, leave me alone. And they gave me the rolling eye emoji, and they said, we're running the ball. You up? And then I, of course, sent the smirk emojis. And then I was back at their house and ma making Hot Pockets, and we spent the night together, and it was really, really lovely. And just when you think... Just no sit in this for a while. I thought they were toast. Just when we thought it was finished, 
I break up with them, I draw my line, make my boundary, losers of five straight losers, Jim Carrey style, and down 28-14 in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys, a fiery Aaron Rodgers, led the Screen Bay offense. It was 17 unanswered points. They stunned the Cowboys. My goodness, another season is alive. You got a, you got a headset toss from McCarthy, trying to pull Lombardi, all that stuff. We're going to get to all of that. But much like the Bucks, listen, the Packers figured it out. They figured out what Tom Brady figured out. These old dudes forgot. You know, take some Ginkgo Galoba, Ashwagandha, whatever needs to happen. You remember the good times of running the ball. And they did that. They went to the ground 39 times, and that's compared to just 20 pass attempts from Rodgers. So they ran it well. I mean, Shade is going to love this. It's the perfect day to have LaShawn McCoy on the show talking about all this running around the league and then some of the non-running that happened with the, the Bills in the second half as they get away from uh, uh, Devin Singletary all the time. But they racked up 207 yards. The Packers did. It was They were well over five yards a pop. And it was a commitment to opening things up and committing to run to help Rodgers out. If you look at this, the 20 pass attempts I'm talking about, they were Rodgers' fewest in a game since week four of 2010. But he made it most of them. What did he do? Incred- I mean, he made a receiver gain confidence and then he'll never turn around. Watson was incredible, stunning performance by him. So fun to watch. Three touchdowns from Rodgers. Amazing pra- passer rating. That ranks as one of the top 10 games of his entire career, Aaron Rodgers, after that dumpster fire we saw last week against the Lions. So, yeah, I am up. I am listening. I'm answering your call. I'm putting the, the ringtone on in the middle of the night. You call me, Packers, I am there. If you stick to this run heavy approach, Thursday night, Short week against the Titans. I think there's no chance they don't lose that game. I would be shocked if they don't lose that, if they don't pull that out. And I do think they need to just keep it going. What a turn of events, though, like from week 9 to week 10. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now, right? Are we going to get out of here? I think we should. Uh, well, Sean McCoy is joining us next. My old buddy finally makes time for me on this program. We love Shady, and he's here after this right here on Up and Adams. Hey, tweet us. Tom Brady said, what an atmosphere. Thank you, Germany. He said it was great to go over there. I mean, I'm sure it was. And getting a win and the turnaround continues for this Buck squad. Y'all let them hang around. You NFC South, you idiots, you Saints, you whatever, your Falcons, you Panthers, and the rest of the NFC, you let them figure it out, and here they go. Uh, and now we join, are joined by a very special guest, one of my favorite guys, 12 seasons in the NFL for the Eagles, the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Buccaneers. Not one, but two-time Super Bowl champion, six-time <laughs> uh, Pro Bowl running back. You can see him, by the way, every weekday, working hard here in L.A. as a co-host on FS1's Speak. LaShawn McCoy, how are you? You always do my intro so well, Kay. How you doing? <laughs> I'm so good. How is how is the show? It's a new show, revamped daily show. It it's fun. It's cool. It's um it's new for me. This is really my first time really doing TV, but I love my, my cast. I'm with every day, man. Great people to work with. Um, it's a lot of fun. Talk football and enjoy ourselves. And you know how, how important team is because you were in the league so long and you won two Super Bowls the last year you spent in Tampa Bay with none other than Tom Brady, who just beat up on the Seahawks a little bit. So I want to talk about this. Uh, is Tom, I, I called it last week, they're turning it around and they are a legit threat. And now they're running the ball and that defense looks good. Why did they struggle early? Why are they running the ball now? And are they legit? You know what? As I watched the game, um, and I guess previous, previously, I always felt like that the, the Bucks, man, they were just, um, I guess, like one-dimensional. One-dimensional yeah. in the running game. They did the same stuff, very predictable. A, a lot of power runs, the same thing, dual runs that they've been running since I was there. And I think yesterday, or yeah, yesterday when I watched the game, it looked different. They were doing a lot of counters. They were doing a lot of tosses. Um, different things getting to the perimeter where they haven't done that before. So I think that they're evolving a lot more in the running game. Um, and that's the only thing I was really missing. I think with Tom Brady, if you watch all his success and all his teams, he may be throwing the ball a lot, but they really um, do well and succeed when they're running the ball. And they did a lot, a lot of that yesterday against the uh, Seahawks. They did. And something else that was not one-dimensional was this. And it's i got to get your thoughts. Leonard Fournette. The pass? <laughs> <laughs> Talk you know, to I've me. Been text, I've been texting Lenny all day like, yo, we did a, first of all, y'all did a fade goal ball to a 45 Hall of Fame quarterback. What are we doing here? That was pretty funny. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I, I don't know. They laughed about it, but 
I think he threw. I, I don't know. I don't. I can't even give you. An Why answer. didn't they let you do this? I, it, it probably been the same results. <laughs> It'd been the same results. And then the, fu the funny part is, is Tommy tripped the guy when he caught the pass. Wait, I need to see that again. He trips the guy. Hold on, hold on. Let's yeah, go back there. Look, yeah, yeah. He, let's go look at. You know I, what? I, I just want your flag. Take. He got a flag for tripping. All right, let's see. All right, look, look, look. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Tom Brady right there. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, He's boy. clever, huh? Those He's... old guys are clever. <laughs> Those old guys are clever. Those old guys need to run the ball, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I want to get to this uh, another team that you used to play on, and it was, of course, the Buffalo Bills. That Vikings game, it was one of the best in the entire year. Best for the regular yeah. season game maybe I've ever seen. So uh, are you buying into this Viking squad, and what do you think of Kirko Chains? First of all, that probably was the best regular season Game ever. I've ever seen, ever been a part of, or even seen. Um, you know what? Yeah, like, you know, let me say the problem. The problem is that my Eagles, right? Yes. Beat the hell out of them, bullied them, whooped on Kirk Cousins, Jeff, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. They beat on them boys, and now everybody thinks they're not, they're not a real deal. No, the Vikings are a real team. The thing is. The Eagles, we can do that. <laughs> Y'all can't do that. So, yes, we got to take this team more serious. You you just made it about the Eagles, and that's why I love you. You somehow, they're, you're <laughs> such a, you're saying you're new to TV, but you just completely rerouted. There's no Eagles logo on the screen, nothing, but you had to take it right back to fly, Eagles fly, which is fine. But do you think, you know, the real issue is Kirk Cousins. That's what people aren't yeah. believing in, right? Like, you could say first year head coach, but he clearly came, gave new energy. Z Zadir, everyone on the defense looks, you know, look, is getting to look better, too. But what is different about this year's Kirk Cousins than in years past? I would say this. I would say the chemistry. Uh, Kirk Cousins, if you mean like the small things, right? I look at how after the games, how they celebrate Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. When he had, you know, the press conferences, the things they say about him. They all love Kirk Cousins. I mean, if you watch like even the stuff on the planes, you got the jury on, having a good time. That's cool, but it's a bigger picture than that. The bigger picture is how the guys on the defense, his wide receivers, his D-backs, his linebackers, they all love him. They want to be part of him. And when you have situations like that, it, it makes better football. Like, guys want to play for each other. I'll give you some examples. There's times where, with the Buffalo Bills, right? Okay. I had a fumble, fourth down, I had a fumble, or third down, I had a fumble against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? They go, they get the ball, they're about to score, right? Now, I'm in my head like, oh, my God, I just yeah. gave up the game with a fumble. Tredavious White, cornerback, he gets a fumble. Saves the game. He takes the ball and he comes straight to me and gives me the ball. Me telling that story is basically like they're playing for each other. He played for me. Yeah. When you love your teammates and like your teammates, you'll do whatever it takes to win for them. A lot of them passes that, that Kurt threw, some passes were good, some passes weren't good. But the, the I think the ability um, of, of his players like Justin Jefferson right. to go up there and make that effort, that was for Kirk Cousins. So stuff like that, when guys love each other and they, and they like playing with each other, they play well together. Yeah, but, but it doesn't always amount to wins because I could look at the Buffalo Bills, the team you're talking about, they play for each other. Stephon, I mean, Josh Allen is throwing interceptions into the red zone left and right yeah. like it's in style, <laughs> like he's supposed to. But Stephon Diggs gets up at the podium yesterday and he says, that's my quarterback. I have a winning quarterback. I support him. They play as a team. You were there for four years in Buffalo yeah. for that play and so many more. All the talk all season, I mean, they're the anointed team, right? And then you've yeah. got Josh Allen, whether or not he's going to play. He goes out there. They're, they're getting away from running the ball. Are we worried about the Buffalo Bills? Nah, I'm not, I'm not worried about the Buffalo Bills. Like, I mean, Josh is still, what, top three best quarterback in the NFL, right? Um, you know, they, they played a good team. They played a good team. The Vikings played well. They won the games. A lot of turnovers, up and downs. A lot of momentum. People don't understand momentum is big in this league, and I think Josh is still the real deal. Um, yeah. I just think the difference between playing for each other is like one guy is like the franchise quarterback that we all know about. Yeah. And the other guy, Kirk Cousins, is a guy that I feel like they're always trying to replace. They're always trying to find better. You know, and uh, that's the difference between the two quarterbacks. Were you you were there for Josh Allen's what his rookie year? Yeah. Yes. What did you that's, that's What did boy. you see in him? By the way, real quick. All the handshakes that came from me, he would tell you that. All the handshakes he does came from me. I get it, got some style, you know? Okay, what do you mean? Show me something. Give me a little. Uh, no, I'm saying, but if you watch, all he does all them handshakes. Yeah, with right, everybody. Right, right, that came from me. <laughs> when he came, first of all, the guy came from Wyoming football. <laughs> true, and, true. And, and, and every look, he would be like this. Good job, Shady. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to change that up. So, 
We got, I gave him some, some, um, some spice. You gave I'll him some spice, and you did, and he's amazing. Did you know, though, back for his rookie year that he had that in him, that the leadership oh, man, ability? I, I would say that I'm, I'm the first person to call this out. I, I said, this guy is, has super talent. In three years, he'll be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's like when you watch him, first of all, he's very competitive. He hates to lose. Mm. Even like the small things like running guys over and fighting for first downs, that's who he is. He's a big guy. He has a big arm. If I had to, you know, pick a quarterback with the biggest arm, it's probably him and Pastor Mahomes. It's like neck to neck. Um, the only thing as a rookie is, you know, he took a lot of chances. Yeah. So he would have like, um, like mental laps where he would throw picks. He wasn't super accurate all the time. But stuff like that is coaching. So I figured once he gets that together, he's very intelligent. And once he gets his accuracy together, that's his plan, getting more reps, repetition. He'll be a dog, and he's a big, big dog now. But league. you're saying he's a big, big dog, but he, the truth is he has, and he is, but he has four red zone interceptions. The yeah. truth is that this team has not scored a second-half touchdown since week six. Well, this is the thing, though. Like, every team's not perfect, right? Like, for example, I was talking about Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Like, if they find a way to close some, some of them games out, yeah. they were up on all their losses. They lost in the fourth quarter. So every team has something to get better at. The Ravens was more just closing games out. They could be undefeated. Where the Bills, I think this is small things. Like, sometimes, hey, throw the ball away. Sometimes, take the field goal. You know, yeah. I think sometimes Josh, with that arm, he'll try to fit balls in there. So, the good thing is, moving the ball is not a problem. Getting in the red zone is not a problem. I think being safer with the football is a problem, and you can work on that. I think he does too much on his own. Like, in the first half, I'm watching Devin Singletary... He was amazing. He had two rushing touchdowns, and then somehow in the second half, they totally get away from it. And then you're asking yeah, Josh balling. to do it all on his own, and then bad things happen, even though he has Stephon Diggs. And I think they're going to be fine, too. I know you like the Ravens. Are the Ravens the biggest contender to the Bills? Do you like them more than the Bills? Where are you at? Uh, I think my contenders are, are the Bills, the Chiefs, um, and the, uh, the Ravens. I'm actually surprised how well the Chiefs are. I, being over there and seeing how much Tarvik Hill means to their offense, and even at times, like, they're not the same explosive team in my eyes, in my opinion. But that just shows you how, how good that Andy Reid is with calling them plays up and how good Patrick Mahomes is is dialing them up and, and, and uh, executing them because they're moving like a machine now, right? It's not You don't see a lot of them three-play touchdowns up the top yeah. with Tyree Hill. You know, they're not as fast and as explosive, but they are still productive and I think them, them three teams, man, are, are, are probably the biggest contenders in the AFC. Because we already know what the NFC is all about. We uh, already know about we that. We already know. We like <laughs> Jalen Hurts for MVP. We already know. But That's it's right. so funny that you bring that up because obviously coaching is what everybody's talking about right now, LaShawn. And everybody, even if you look at odds or you look at anything, it's, you know, Dable. It's McDaniel. Yes. Yes. It's and, and they're incredible and they deserve. But people, you know, people still are crediting Bill Belichick because he's obviously a legend and he's turning that team around in November and they're winning. They're still alive in the AFC East. Andy Reid, what is that face? You were, you were going great until you said the Belichick. Because he's not, you don't think he's a, a great, he's, he's not one of the better coaches in the league? No. He's, I mean, he's had Tom Brady. I mean, if you take away Tom Brady, do you know who he is? He's under 500. He's under 500. That's what he is. So you think, his, his, so you would take, what do you take away from him then after, after seeing what he's been like without Brady? Um, I think he's very blessed to have Tom Brady. And I think now that he doesn't have Tom Brady, he's like all the other coaches, all the other good coaches. The Marvin Lewis's, the Rex Ryan's. He's a necklace. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just being honest. People, they, they hate for you to be real about Belichick. I think he's a good coach, but all the greatest, and he, we, we've never seen anything like him. That's, that's bull crap. But isn't there something to be said for the consistency of a co is it you're putting it so much on time? I know that, and you were with Tom Brady, so I'm not, I'm not yeah. arguing with you. But I mean, to have someone have a flat, that's why I think Mike, Mike Tomlin is so impressive because he has that team over 500 no matter what the hell is going on, on and off the field. And that's, there's something about that that it's not easy to get your team back every year. Oh, that's true. That's Especially true. after you win. Tom Brady's winning back to back rings 04, and he's coming back and they're still as hungry. Look at the Rams right now. But I, I get that. But like, Imagine if Tomlin had Tom Brady. Yeah. Imagine if, if, if he would have multiple championships. Imagine if a guy like Andy Reid had Tom Brady. He would have multiple championships. Now that Tom Brady's gone, right, it's going to be a struggle every year for the Patriots to go to the playoffs, right? And then when they did go to the playoffs, they got blown out by a divisional opponent, which is always the hardest yeah. teams to play against, by like 30 points. I just, 
I think he's a good coach. I just don't get over, like, hype like everybody else does because I just look at the stats. Yeah. I look at, like, when he had Brady, he was doing all type of stuff. When I was in Buffalo, they had um, a dude named Jamie Collins. He was oh, the yeah. best defensive player on the team, Such right? Such an athlete, yeah. He's great. Yo, they traded his uh, – I guess he didn't want to take a contract that the, the Patriots were offering him. So they traded him to, to, to the um, Browns, right? And I was like, damn, how can they do that? We're, we're, in the, we're in the room, the office room, like – the offensive players and the coaches like, how do they trade their best player? Right. Well, you can do that when you got Tom Brady. It don't matter. Now that now that Tom's gone, yeah. They, Let me just say paying, this: they they paying everybody on defense. Yeah. You never see you never see the Patriots spend money on defense. They paying everybody, and they still barely getting over the hump. So I just call it how I see it. Okay. I, I, right, but here's what I, I'm just gonna put in my in my head. It, the, it's a, it was a perfect marriage, because you can't. Okay, Tom Brady was a sixth round quarterback that everyone okay. passed on. Right. So you can't take – Tom Brady developed under the stewardship and coaching of Bill Belichick. You can't say that he got to where he is without that. So would Tom be the same quarterback without Bill Belichick? I don't think so. Maybe now I, I, after 20 – you know I, what I'm I, saying? I, I think so. For example, like – so if you're saying Tom Brady was like a – was he six, six round? Seven round? Six, six round. round draft pick? So that means he had six round probably talent, right? And he, and he developed this guy – he has a first rounder that I don't see look develop and Mac Jones. And then I look at all the Belichick well, gonna do nothing with the offense. He's a defensive guy. They look at all the offense coaches that, that come from the Patriots. They go anywhere else, they 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 lose. I can name all the coaches. I don't want to put them on the spot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They don't do well. They do they do bad, then they come back to the Patriots, hopefully to have some success. Now yeah. that time's gone, I just don't I just don't see it. I don't I don't see where I give him so much credit. I don't see him developing quarterbacks. I, I don't, I don't, the offense, I don't see the team. I don't, they don't look the same to me. With Tom's there, they look way different. So it's so, the reason I'm even bringing this up because I was with the coaches is that Andy Reid doesn't get, I can't tell you the last time I talked about Andy Reid as a coach, as one of the best coaches, as one of the, but, I, but you know, I'm just, I'm not saying I don't believe he is, but I think that he gets lost in the sauce. I think now we got these new sparkly toys, and I don't think people are giving Andy Reid enough credit for what he's done with this offense without Ty Kadarius Tony couldn't get anything done with Danny Dimes in New York. Comes there, and now he's a piece. He's making yeah. it happen. There's guys stepping up and doing it. And that, and I think that Andy Reid maybe, and I don't know if you're saying he's better than Bill Belichick, which clearly you oh, are saying that. Oh, no, I don't even think it's close. I just think that, like, first of all, Andy Reid's a genius, right? He's yeah. going to get, if Patrick Mahomes is there, yeah. If he's not there. Now, with Patrick Holmes, it's way different. But I, I never was, like, super crazy about Alex Smith. I think he was solid. I mean, for a while, they were calling Alex Smith a bus. And he turned it around. Andy Reid kind of got that going. I mean, like, anybody you put with, with Andy Reid, he's going to win games. I remember when I was over there and, and Patrick Holmes got hurt. Yeah. He was hurt, for, I think, five games. I think out of the five games, we won, like, four of them or three of them. So I, I just feel like if, if, a, if a guy like Andy Reid was with a guy like Tom Brady from his start – to the finish, like, we will be speaking how great he is as a coach, you know, but that's just the truth of it. It's the truth Andy of Reed's it. Andy Reid's the real deal. He is the real deal, and, like, they're obviously serious contenders. So you like the Ravens, you like the Chiefs, and obviously the Bills are there. Over in the NFC is an easy conversation with you. And I, I, know, I know you wanted to talk about Jeff Saturday as one of the best coaches in the league, but we just don't have time, LaShawn. <laughs> we don't have time <laughs> to, to get to that. that. But that's pretty cool, though, that, that he won that, like, I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was definitely upset about it. Like, damn, all these people that try to get these jobs, yeah. you know, they don't get a chance, but whatever. But I, I will say this, I was happy for him just because um, he's an ex-player, yeah. chance to be a head coach, and he won a game. Like, I, I'm happy for him. That's what Darius Butler said. He goes, I want to be a coach someday. I was a player. I, I was with the Colts. Like, I, like, it's good to see players have success like that, and we'll see what this team looks like. I mean, putting Matt Ryan in was crazy. All of it was crazy. It was all crazy, but you got to, you know, whatever. I don't want to spend time on the Colts. Uh, I want to spend time on the Eagles because that's where, you know, mm. you decide. It was, you know, you played, you won two Super Bowl rings, but you wanted to retire as an Eagle. It was important to you. You've been on two Super Bowl teams, so you were the perfect person to tell me what is so special about this squad that makes you think they got what it takes. You know, when I, like, when I watch other teams, like, um, for example, let's talk about the Bills, where okay. it's very, they're coached very well, super talented, um, probably, what, best quarterback in, the, in football, either him or, or Josh, but they beat their selves. When I watch the Chiefs, they play the Colts, great team, but they beat their selves. We don't do that. If you're going to beat the Eagles, you got to come here and just beat us. We're not going to turn the ball over. We're not going to have a whole bunch of penalties. We're not going to throw picks in the red zone or have a whole bunch of turnovers. 
we actually play solid football. And I think you look at the, the defense to the offense, I think we have the best roster in football um, collectively, right? Yeah. Now, some might have a better quarterback or some might have a, a better wide receiver or, or, or a guy that rushes the passer. But, but collectively, I think we have the best roster, the best team, and, and we play like it. <laughs> so that's why we're the top. It's so funny because I think that there's some, there's some uh, fans of other teams, Buffalo included, saying, what is this we? Well, I mean, anytime you're the all-time leading rusher of all time for that <laughs> history, you got to say we, you know? <laughs> That's sure. the team you identify with the most. And, and the Eagles fans, I, I got my I producer here going, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> so there, everyone's saying Super Bowl team, but mo, mo, a lot of people are also saying undefeated team. So let's do it. it. The chatter is getting louder and louder. I want you to find the Eagles' loss. Find a game that they lose. I'm looking at the schedule. I think we have it for you here. You got okay. Washington tonight, which we all know how that's going to go. You know, we, we all assume. At Colts, oh, Green Bay. Do we have a full screen of this? Look. Colts, Green Bay. Nah, we'll get Colts and Green Bay. Okay. Then um, the next up would be Tennessee. Let's roll through this. Tennessee. Where do you see the loss? The, well, I don't see any losses, but if I had to pick a game, <laughs> I would pick at the Giants. Okay, talk to me, week 14. Well, the reason why is because um, we're going to run one, two, three. We'll have three, we have four wins until we play them. And then, like, I'll be thinking about sometimes, like, divisional games are the hardest games to play. They know, they know each other. They see each other, you know, twice a year. And, you know, when you watch tape, you might watch the Cowboys game, right? And they have the, your, your opponent on there because we all play the same teams in the division. So you're familiar with everything that the team likes to do. So yeah. if I had to pick a team, I'd pick the Giants would be the first. I don't know. Well, you're not worried. I don't about, want to say you're loss. Not worried about that at Colts, that at Jeff Saturday action. You want that? No, no, no. <laughs> Even though he's he's very very great with the experience, I do think we can get them. Okay, that's a win. So and you're not worried about Aaron? I mean, Aaron Rodgers looked he looked like that guy last night. I, see, I, I I think different. I think that they ran the ball well, which you're not gonna run the ball unless like that. We're going to make Aaron Rodgers throw the ball. And that sounds crazy to say that, but that's how you beat them. They yeah. want to run the ball. So, you got, so they can't get it to Aaron Jones, and you'll stop the run. Then you th yeah. Yeah, and, and then we're going to put – I don't know right. if if, um, if any of the rookies ever been locked up, the, the wide receivers for, for the, the uh, Packers. But when you come to play Philadelphia, our D-backs, we lock up. We lock up. <laughs> we can lock up. So, you know I mean? so you have them going 12-0 and 0 and potentially falling to New York at – uh, at New York, at MetLife, but it, it might not happen. Well, I mean, we might go undefeated. It ha <laughs> I mean, it happened before. It happened before. It's a, uh, does, it, does this team feel like that kind of team, though? I think so. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, we, we play our own style of football, and then that's not that we make you play our game. Like, and I talked about closing games out. When we were had to close the game out against the Cowboys, they played better in the second half, we closed it out. When we had to close it out against the Cardinals, we closed it out. Being able to run the ball late in the games, that's a heartbreaker because you can't stop it. Yeah. I feel confident, Kay. I don't know. I feel confident. <laughs> I love it. Okay, you have Speak today on FS1. What is the one topic, last question, the one topic you cannot wait to talk to you about with Joy and Company? I want to talk about the Cowboys losing. Everybody loves how great Dallas is. Weird. Every, they, Acho, right, Dave Hellman and Joy Taylor, they all love Dak Prescott. And I'm thinking, like, why? I think Dak's okay. But he's just, I mean, he's okay. He's not like, they, they, he's like a top six quarterback. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I would say he's a top 10, no? What's wrong like, with him? Uh, What's he's wrong always, with like, him? He's like, he's like 13, 13, 15, like around there. Around there. You, would you take Kirk Cousins or Dak Prescott? I might take Kirk. <laughs> I might take Kirk. Kirk Cousins or Dak Prescott, bro? What are you? Okay, come on. okay, okay, okay. I would, I would take Dak. I would take Dak. Okay, so who's? Uh, come on now. Jalen Hurts is number what? Three. Allen, Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Go on. J Joe Burrow, Herbert. B Burrow, Herbert, fair. Mahomes, did we mention? I don't even know. Mahomes, Brady. How many is that right there? Brady. Who? Without a doubt. Without Rogers? a doubt. Rodgers, yeah, and, and Rodgers is playing bad right now, but I still would take Rodgers. Okay, so it's like top ten, I think. All right. Yeah, he's like he's like, he's like right outside the top ten. He's you got like real hot on that. You got real hot on that, Kirk Cousins. That was a real hot take. That was a real they, hot take right away. They're, they're, they they close. But okay, that's the kind of stuff that you will see with LaShawn McCoy on FS1 later today and every day, every weekday. Uh, you and I both hate LA so far, but we're hopefully uh, it wins us over. You're the best. Thanks for making time today. 
How are you, Kay? Happy seeing you. Yeah, great to see you. Two-time Super Bowl champ, but he says we about one team, and it is those undefeated Philadelphia Eagles who've got it going tonight against the Commanders. We've got more. Dak Prescott, not a great quarterback. Wow, I could have done 20 more minutes with him. Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, hell of a win. Got my boy in the background. That's 100. That's 100. That's 100. We're going to go crazy with the fans real quick. A beautiful game. A fan favorite. I love the social media person. It's like, just take it. Number 95. Chris Jones, just take it and do what you want. He's incredible. And so are the Chiefs. 27-17 win over the Jags at Arrowhead, of course. Uh, and that's where I'd like to start. We're going to check in on some of the major storylines around the league. I, I'm still not over. But Belichick's not a good coach. Did he say more? Did he say Marvin Lewis as the first coach to come? He's with the Marvin Lewises of the world. Like you could not come up with a more um, applicable or uh, I don't even know, like a vanilla granola at 500 sort of coach than Marvin Lewis. And I cannot believe that you are saying that, LaShawn McCoy. I feel like I'm dreaming and just woke up. Uh, I don't know why we keep going to that shot. That shot. I literally look <laughs> awful. <laughs> My, everything's a mess. Please, director, stop doing that to me. Okay, Kansas City moves to 7-2, and two, so let's dig into it. Uh, and the one seed, that's your one seed in the AFC. Hey! They win over Jacksonville. Buffalo loses to the Vikings. And while beating the Jags was what we all obviously expected this team to do, there's some interesting stuff going on uh, as we talk to Shady McCoy. McCole Hardman missed the game. He had some sort of stomach thing going on. Juju Smith-Schuster, he leaves the game early with a concussion. Mahomes and his Chiefs offense somehow still puts on, I like the music, still puts on the show. Uh, and really thanks in large part to this guy, Kadarius Atoni. 90 total yards and a touchdown. I mean, this looked like the second coming of Dante Hall at times. I'm just going to say it with the bonds. And he looked awesome. The trade for the former first rounder seemed like it might have been a little gratuitous. What are we doing here? Kansas City pulled it off. But especially after all of these injuries that happened yesterday, Brett Veach, you look so smart. You look brilliant for making the deal. And Tony, you got to keep your eyes on him because he, I, I didn't know what he'd shake out to be, but he could be a huge difference maker. The Chiefs want to hang on to that one seed. Uh, number two, a lot of people have Patrick Mahomes as their top choice for MVP right now, but I uh, don't think that that's correct because he's certainly not getting the South Florida vote. <laughs> You love to see it. I got tweets about it. I was so excited. I didn't say he should be the MVP, but he should definitely be in the conversation, in the forefront, in the mix. Uh, the Browns went down. I think 17-39 was the end of the was the end of the game. There, the final score to a perfect day, near perfect. 285 yards, three more touchdowns. Read it and weep. So he strengthens his MVP case that I laid out uh, because why? The Dolphins are seven and zero, undefeated when Tua starts and finishes the game. Passer rating fifth best in a single season in NFL history. What? The Dolphins would go into their bye now. Perfect, well-timed bye. First place in the AFC East. Brian, cover your ears. They're the number two seed overall in the AFC, second to only the Chiefs. Uh, and, you know, then you have Josh Allen, and he's the other guy who we're talking about in that division as far as an MVP case being made. He can't get a win in his own division. He's over. He's thrown four reds on interceptions. No, we love Josh Allen. They'll straighten it out. But it doesn't take away from Tua uh, and how he should be in the mix and even more so this week. Uh, Jeff Saturday gets the coaching gig on an interim basis, has a hell of an intro presser. He's a leader. He's going to give it his all. He might not be any good at it, but he's not going to back down. And then there's the Colts. And then they decided to put Matt Ryan in. This was a thrilling 25-20 win in Vegas. And, the, I mean, Brandon Marshall came on and talked about Josh McDaniels, and uh, I mean, that's not good either. But I want to hear from Jim Ursay and what he said in the locker room after the game. Take a look at this. It's been a tough week, but uh, we believe and we know in who you are, Jeff. And congratulations. I know you will treasure this, my brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> hey. We all get involved. Everybody's getting a game ball, man, because we all put it in. Everybody gets a game ball, and my favorite thing about football, Victory Monday. We'll see y'all ah! I'm happy for Jeff Saturday and for the Ursay family and for Colts fans, but I can't help but be a little perturbed for Frank Reich 
okay? A healthy Jonathan Taylor and the 11th hour switch from Sam Ellinger back to Ryan, Matt Ryan is what spurred this win. So all indications, the, everything we know is that Mr. Ursay himself was behind the decision to bench Matt Ryan for the rest of the year, saying adamantly, he's done for the year, we're putting in Ellinger. And that was a few weeks ago. Ellinger, a completely unknown product. Like, a, what, what are we doing here? Uh, I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but obviously things changed at the last minute. So if Reich, tell me, if Reich had Ryan available to him over the past two weeks, you're telling me the Colts might not be sitting in a playoff spot right now? No, yeah, they might be. Instead, they're still sitting on the outside, looking in and moving further into the purgatory that quarterback needy teams don't want to be in. What, are, what, what is the goal here? What are we doing, Colts? If you're too good to be at the top of the draft, but not good enough to get into the playoffs, what are we doing? And sure, maybe this can spark the Colts to a playoff appearance. I wouldn't put them, put it past them. They do have those Eagles, as I see on the schedule on November 20th. I'd be all for it if the Colts go to the playoffs, but I just don't, I think they're, they are flirting with mid. You know what I'm saying? Like they're mid. You're not a total tragedy, but you're not a nine. So what are we doing here? Like improve yourself, save up so you can get a couple of facials and microneedling so you can be a nine for next season. Or you keep blowing, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, um, they're, they're I don't want them to be mid either. Dang. Or go for it and, and, you know, have Matt Ryan at your disposal because you could be sitting prettier as we go into uh, to week 11 action. Oh, God, what am I talking about? All right, let's look at a short break here because we're going to go around the league with some local heroes. Christian Watson's not getting enough play on the show. Look at those touchdowns. That Lambo leaping for him. So we'll be back. We'll talk victories. This is when we break for the commercial. If anybody wants to break for the commercial, no? Okay. You the best in the game? Of course, of course. I, I, I feel like I stated that today. I think you did. I think so, too. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's go, Titan Nation, baby. Huge dub. Uh, great to have you all out here. Let's keep it rolling. Time for some local heroes, where we spotlight a few standout performances from Sunday's action. And that man you just saw, Nick Westbrook-Akine, is absolutely leading the list. The Titans offense has been <laughs> dead last in the NFL this season. No A.J. Brown. So dumb to get rid of him, give him to the Eagles who were undefeated. We've been wondering who is going to step up and help out this passing game. And out of nowhere, Westbrook Akine emerged. So fun to watch. Racked up 119 yards and both Titans touchdowns, including this beautiful one, uh, and a runoff of flea flicker to pull Tennessee out of a 10 nothing hole and help the squad move to 6-3 and three on the season. 6-3, and three, not too shabby. Thursday Night Football. Early game, another wide receiver emerged in Green Bay. And so it'll be interesting to see, is it going to be Christian or Akine who are getting all the love from the Amazon crew in just a couple nights here to kick off week 11, which is bananas. All right, next, I'm looking at a couple of top three picks on the Lions defense, okay? So let's do it. We got co-hero action. Jeff Okuda, Aiden Hutchinson, the highly touted draft pick. Lions trailing the Bears, 14 points. They're on the road. They pull off... A miraculous comeback. By what? By fueling uh, their two young defensive stars to victory. Akuda flies in for this pick six. Sorry, Justin Fields. Sorry, Bears fans. Sorry. Uh, it ties the game at 24. Then you got, yeah, Hutchinson, as we're seeing here, clutch. Ooh, Sorry, Fields. Clutch sack of him on the game's final drive. Of course, it helps the Lions seal the win. And they're 3-6 and six on the day and send Chicago to last place in the NFC North. I didn't hear from Bears fans. Did you guys at our Twitter? No, I haven't heard from them. All quiet on the Bears front this week. Are, 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 we not, are you not going to the Super Bowl now, Bears fans? I don't know. Uh, finally, I can't. Conrad's like, don't incite them. Don't incite them. Finally, I can't say enough about Justin Jefferson. Oh, my gosh. Just show it. To show what he did against the Bills. Oh my gosh. We just can't speak during it. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Ah. 10 for 193 and a touchdown on the day. It was obviously bigger than that. Every single time in this game, it looked like the Vikings were buried. He emerges with some sort of superhuman play. Odell's tweeting about it. It was amazing. And not only did he play such a pivotal role in getting the Vikings 
to 8-1. and one. He now leads the league, averaging 117.8 receiving yards per game this season. And at that pace, he's become the first receiver in NFL history to hit 2,000 yards in a single season. And I'm here for it if that, if that goes down. Like, that's unbelievable what he is doing. And on that note, we are going to get out of here and do some fun to end this show. Oh, now, now, now I have 10 seconds, Conrad. Now I have 10 seconds. You rushing me out of stuff? Happy Monday. I didn't see that. Hamilton, get in here. Is that Mr. Vita Vea, the drinking partner of one Levante David? Now I understand why he wants to party. Yeah, it looks like he might have gotten started a little early. That was uh, that was incredible. Bucks win in Munich. Matthew Hamilton is here. Let's take a look at some other viral moments that I probably missed. This, you tell me this is more. Mike McCarthy comes to Lambeau. He's the head, he's the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And everyone's going nuts saying he's trying to look like Lombardi. Your thought? The peak coat? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a Lombardi-esque look. It's, no. it's a bold move to to walk into Lambeau sporting that look. And if you're going to do it, I feel like you got to come out with a win. If, if, you're, um, if he's trying to be, you guys are all idiots. If he's trying to be Lombardi, <laughs> he's wearing the hat. Nothing else matters but the hat. So that right away, <laughs> he's not trying to be Lombardi. He's trying to, I'm sorry, is it so, it's so shocking that a coach, I don't know, wants to look <laughs> nice? He put away his like performance gear Free, free tweet team swag and Kirkland brand zip ups and wanted to show up and look nice going to Lambo. Like, it's so weird. It is weird because coaches <laughs> don't dress like that, but I'm here for it. He's not trying to look like Lombardi. Uh, I, I, it's a signature look. I think if you're showing up in that, but uh, I think we got to hit the biggest viral moment of the day. Mike Pereira uh, got caught with, uh, with a few extracurriculars, oh, let's say, when he thought he was off camera. What do you think I'm about Mark this? I'm Mark Ingram, and I'm giving this a red card. This is <laughs> unsettling, unnerving. Stop showing. Yeah, he looks like he's doing it to me. <laughs> Who? I need the backstory. Someone Can we bring me, that back? Marissa, find the backstory.